Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and today I'll be playing the family blitz on Lee Chess and during the game I'll try to be as instructive as possible like always, making sure that there's something to be taken away as a learning that helps you improve your game to the next level. Now before I start with the game, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. So yeah, let's start with the game and see how it goes. Which pieces we get? Got the blank pieces. I'll play the Karukan defense that starts with c6. Um, and you can play this opening against any kind of an opening, what white does. You start with c6, then go for d5. And irrespective of the fact what your opponent's first two moves are, this becomes the advanced variation because the pawn is advanced. It could have become the exchange variation had you taken the pawn. Or the main line if you would have just developed the knight first. I'll play e6, trying to make sure that center is solid. And go for a pawn break early, or I can play knight first so that there is no bishop check coming once I play pawn forward next. Okay, you can bring back a bishop always, hoping that opponent will take. If it doesn't happen, you don't have to be bothered about it. Just develop the bishop here, asking questions to the open straight away you really want to exchange or not and if he decides not to you can just push oh i could have to spoil this pawn structure maybe it goes back anyway i like to go here now not give my bishop like that attack the knight instead i don't think knight is going anywhere else unless he wants to retrieve back that doesn't make sense so in case he decides to castle right away i can take on that knight which doesn't happen. We can offer bishop exchange maybe after playing the knight. Yes, we can. And open up the edge file for the attack too. Or I can pin the knight. Either way it's possible. I say let's pin the knight first. Let's just see where the open castles first, okay? So the casting is done. I can go on with my knight, trying to occupy c4 next. And then I can develop the other knight as well from e7 to f5 attacking the bishop then so knight play now begins it prevents my knight coming from there okay which means uh his knight would have to be there for longer than what he thought it could have been so i just get back with my other knight now on f5 maybe Ah, uh, the pawn is weak but i ah uh, did i just trap my bishop and i have to just take on the knight forcefully Yes, did that did happen, but it's okay. We are pretty much okay with that. I somehow missed it that he can play a simple move like a3 to just make me force it that night. It's important to maintain those pins for longer if you can. Okay, I can take this, but then he gets to have a good open file, which I don't want my opponent to have it. So I'll just go here attacking the bishop so that bishop runs away to the corner on h1 and then probably we can think of something else maybe rerouting this knight somewhere on the other side of the board oh he doesn't but saves the bishop with the queen indirectly that was a nice move i would say by the opponent uh but i still want to take it is what my call is maybe or i have something better here Okay, how is rook here on the c5? Trying to break it open next. And my opponent might move away its queen somehow and miss this bishop is hanging for free. Just hoping for that. And it can happen. It's not a big deal. Okay, he forces the pawn there. Um, I need to have a double protection here. So knight works in that favor. Now I'm going with pawn ahead and then I can take with the rook as well. So the pawn look the structure and the attack now looks more consolidated, more firm. And then we can take on attack, try to attack one of the pawns there, which should help us only. I'll play pawn forward first. I'll take here. Defense. It's an open file which can be used sometime or the other. And how do I make sure that I use things to the fullest? 
Can I play pawn forward and just move his bishop backwards, but doesn't help really. I'll take on his light square bishop maybe, or what else have I got? Yeah, let's take this bishop. Okay, and maybe just go here and then to g6. Take on this dark square bishop as well out of the game. Okay, trying to exchange rooks. I should let him? No, I should not because his bishop is guarding that square as well. Okay, I'll go here, attacking the bishop now. Probably bishop goes here or here, a couple of places if he really wants to save the bishop. Well, if he doesn't, I'll take it. Bishops in end game can be a pain. Which I never want that to happen, so I'll just... After exchanging the bishop and the knight, I can go on with my queen somewhere, trying to uh, gobble some pawns. Castle maybe first. Okay, yes, he saves it. Um, knight here doesn't do any one good things to me, so I think I should just castle here. Yep. Let's see what opponent has got in store now. Queen can come in here, but doesn't do much. Uh, now it does, and that is queen exchange. <laughs> so should I consider it? To be honest, I can, but do I need to is the question. So I'd rather go hunting for some pawns. Let's see what my opponent has got here. I think he's planning pawn forward. Oh, he saves again, cleverly. I'll just play pawn forward. Maybe, no, nah, it doesn't work. Need to exchange that rook as well. How do I go about it? Oh, he lost a pawn there, nice. Take this one at least. And now one more hangs, the bishop is hanging. Now we can do some stuff now. Glad I saw that at the last. I'm trying to defend one, he could have lost another. But that's a nice move, I would say. But what if I have a good counter to that? Because now I want to exchange queens off the board. And then there's a fork coming next if he does take it. If he doesn't take it, I can take this. I think some poor internet for the opponent or he saw the loss in his face. I don't think this game can be saved by right now. I'm attacking the rook, so that's a forced take of the queen. And after we exchange queens, I'm going to go here. And there's no way that he can save everything. Goes back and lose the rook, as I wondered. And now the bishop as well goes. And now he resigns. So first it was the internet connection, and then eventually he resigned. Let's analyze the game, 29 moves here. Generally the average is around 35 when I win. That is what I analyzed from leeches. Okay, anyways, let's start with e4. I played c6, opponent plays d4, going for the big center. I played d5, opponent advances the pawn, the Karakhan defense advance variation, bishop f5, knight c3, pawn e3, knight 2, sorry, knight was on c3, pawn was e6, okay. And then my opponent develops the knight on f3, I go knight d7, opponent develops the bishop on d3, trying to exchange, and I always bring it back. Uh, here I can develop the queen or I can develop the bishop. I chose to exchange bishops, which he denies. Computer suggesting I can take. I just tried to kick that away. It goes back. Yes, I thought later after playing the move, next move, which was bishop here, that I can take on and probably, or even this way, I can just spoil its pawn structure because if he then takes, say with the queen, I also take with the queen. Opponent takes with the knight, and I get to take his bishop, which makes him have double pawns and 
it's going to be an end game where opponent will have this weakness of double pawns, which you can always exploit. That's why I point five in favor of black. But instead of the game, he goes back. I try to just attack his knight. And then I take on the knight. He takes back with the bishop. I go with bishop on b4, trying to pin that knight, open castles. I go with knight to b6, open place pawn forward. I go knight e7, then again a pawn forward, and I have to take the knight, which I do. And then I went with knight to f5, attacking the bishop. Now, computer suggesting I should take it, but I was pretty much uh, not in its favor because this open file can be very de deadly later on. So I went with knight to h4 instead, and opponent offered me bishop by defending it because, yeah, that's a discovered defense, I would say. By moving the bishop away, queen is defending it. I went with rook c8, open plays a4. I go with knight d7, trying to break open the c file. And that's what I do. I play c5, open plays c3. I capture, open does capture, and then I take on the bishop finally, which computer was literally begging me from last five, six moves. And then I go with knight f8, trying to read out my knight on the file where towards the side where my opponent kings lies. Um, I took on this rook, he takes back, and I then go to knight g6, attacking the bishop, which he safeguards. And then I castle, often plays queen to g3. I go with queen b6, often defense with the bishop. Uh, that's again a discovered defense. Uh, queen is now defending the pawn. So my opponent was pretty good at this, uh, but he should have understood that I am getting un, uh, used to his moves so he should play something better there uh, and that leads me to taking the center pawn and as soon as i take that's one pawn a a advantage i get and the game suddenly turns into my favor to like three points um, so yeah that is what center pawns can do and then i try to offer queen exchange which he denies surprisingly because my plan was after he does take i take back and I'm preparing for a folk from here, which yes, he can defend, uh, but then I can just pin the bishop. And if he really wants to exchange, probably doesn't have much choice there. He will have to. And this happens. And then I have a knight against the bishop, extra pawn. This pawn is going to be a good passer. Uh, yes, he can attack my pawns. Uh, I can just safeguard them. Maybe I'm just playing pawn forward. And then he plays, and then I just have to go is move my king towards the center eventually, safeguard my knight throughout, and I'll be pretty much comfortable in the game. Now, instead, he just tried to save and keep his queen on the board, which was bad because he didn't he missed out that his rook was hanging. So center pawns have a great value, so you should try and safeguard them rather than trying to defend a B pawn. I hope you like the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do come back to the channel daily for some interesting videos. And let me know if something else has to be covered. Thanks for watching. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Take care. Bye-bye.